we were, came back from the prayer meeting with, right with uh, some pastors, and we went to bed like any other normal night. And sometime between maybe midnight and three in the morning, I don't know what time, but that's when I went to sleep, so it had to happen somewhere between there. Uh, I all of a sudden was just dropped into a cell. I felt myself dropped and hit the floor in a prison cell. I didn't know how I got there. I didn't know anything. The Lord didn't explain anything to me until the return. All I knew, I was I just appeared in this cell, I hit the floor in this, and it was uh, stone walls. I could see the stone walls. It was rough cut stone, stone, not all smooth and nice. And there were bars on the doors, just like you would imagine a prison cell. And I thought, where am I? And I, I knew I was me. I looked just like me. I had a body. And in Matthew 10, 28, it says, Fear him which is able to cast the soul and the body into hell. So you do have a body. And it looks like you do now. And uh, I looked at myself, and I was laying on the floor. And the first thing I noticed was I didn't have any strength in my body at all. No strength. I, it was as if I didn't have any muscle. I could hardly move. And I thought, what is wrong with my body? I noticed that right away because my wife and I like to work out and eat right and take care of ourselves. So that bothered me that there was no strength at all. And uh, it was terrible. And I looked and I saw these two huge creatures. I didn't know what they were because I went there as an unsaved person. The Lord kept it from my mind that I was a Christian somehow. He just kept it out of my mind. I, don't, I didn't understand it then, but he explained it on the way back and I'll get to that. But I was there as someone unsaved. I didn't know what they were. They were huge, enormous, ugly, terrifying creatures. Uh, worse than anything you can really describe. But to try to describe them, one we'll see in a video that we'll show you. That's a pretty accurate uh, description. But they were um, very reptilish. One was real scales and bumps all over its body. It was about 12 or 13 feet tall. And enormous. Uh, it was out of proportion. Its feet were real big and it had this huge head with uh, a protruding jaw with big teeth and eyes sunken way back in its sockets. Big eyes. And like slime dripping from its mouth. It was gross, horrible looking thing. And they were cursing God. I, I didn't, couldn't understand totally what they were saying, but they were just blaspheming God. Cursing God. And they had such a hatred in them for God is what I felt and heard. And I thought, well, what are these creatures? I didn't know they were demons yet. I didn't realize. I didn't realize exactly where I was yet. And But then I noticed uh, also the heat. It was incredibly hot in this cell. Uh, just beyond anything, I knew this heat, I should be dead. Why am I alive living through this heat? But I didn't die. And that amazed me that I could live through it. This one demon grabbed me and picked me up and threw me into the wall like I was a glass, that light. Just the strength of the demons, I also knew that they had a thousand times the strength of a man. So even if I had strength, you couldn't fight them off. But you didn't even have the pleasure of trying to fight them off because you didn't have any strength. So it's awful when you feel like you can't even fight back. And it threw me in the wall and I felt every bone in my body break. And I thought again, well, I'm dead now for sure. And I felt the pain. I do believe the Lord masked the pain. I didn't feel all of it, but I did feel the pain enough to where I was screaming and begging for mercy from these creatures. And the more I begged, the more they enjoyed. They wanted to do more tortures. And the other one grabbed me. The other one was real, had like razor sharp dorsal fins or something all over its body, its limbs. And again, its limbs and everything was out of proportion and about 12 or 13 feet tall, huge and just grabbed me with its claws and just tore my flesh right off, ripped it right off. And I looked and I thought, oh my gosh, my flesh, it's gone. And the, there was no blood and no water. I noticed right away, it was just dry flesh. And about maybe it seemed like 30 seconds later, the flesh started coming back on. It just came back and I looked like, what is this? This flesh is growing back. And it came on, so they grabbed it and ripped me the flesh off again. And I knew, I thought, they can do this forever. Forever they can do this to me. And, and you wanted to die right then. The pain was terrible and I was begging for mercy. But they don't have any mercy. There is absolutely no mercy with these creatures. They talked amongst themselves about what they were going to do next to me. And the one grabbed my arm and just yanked it right off. Pulled it off. And I'm screaming and I'm so upset too because, you know, you're thinking all the thoughts. You have your full memory in hell. 
and I'm thinking how hard we worked in life to take care of ourselves and eat right and work out and just take care of yourself. And these creatures had absolutely no respect for the body at all. And they just destroyed it. There's a scripture that talks about that you'll go down into everlasting destruction. They're constantly destroying the body because they hate it. And I didn't understand why they hated me with such an intense hatred. I thought, what have I done to these things? I haven't done anything. And But they hated me with a hatred like you, can, you can't get on earth. You know, you've heard of men that hate and kill and do horrible things, but nothing like this. These creatures hate you intensely. And... I was, I, I noticed how I was so thirsty. I wanted a drop of water, just one drop, and there wasn't any water. I noticed there was no water anywhere. Uh, there was no, the atmosphere, the air is so dry because there's no humidity. There's no water in hell. So you're, you're so thirsty, just one drop of water would be so wonderful to have, but you don't get it. There actually were four demons in the cell, but I didn't see the other two. I knew there were four, and that they were assigned to me to torture and torment me forever. For as long as you're in hell, they would be there to torture you. They were assigned. And then I was in a holding cell of some kind. I wasn't in a permanent place that I would be, but just this temporary place. And I, I just didn't see the other two. It, was, it, it got dark after about 30 seconds. That's all it was light for, and then the light went out. It was as if the Lord left. So, but he was there long enough for me to see the sight. So when it went dark, it was so dark. And, and it was a darkness like you can't even imagine. And there's a scripture in uh, Exodus 10.21 says that when the plagues on Israel, uh, Egypt says that darkness which may be felt, it says. And it was actually, it's hard to describe a darkness like this, but it's so eerie and heavy. And that's what I thought, oh, I can't even see. So I got out and, and then there was looking this direction, there was light enough to see the skyline, only because uh, 10 miles away from me was this pit of fire. Huge pit, and it was 3 miles across this pit, 10 miles away, and it was raging, just raging flames, hundreds of feet in the air. So it lit up the skyline enough to be able to see. And I looked, and that's when I really realized, I'm in hell. I'm in hell. And I looked around, and it was all brown, dead, desolate. Nothing of any life, of any kind. Not a green leaf, not a green blade of grass. Nothing alive. I thought this is this stone, dead, and the air was filled with smoke. Horrible, putrid, ugly, way worse than L.A. smog that you hear about. It was terrible. And the thirst, though, I was so thirsty. And you can't breathe. There's not enough air in hell. You just can't breathe. And so the whole time... I, I'll try to, this is how it, you were in hell. I was like this going. <coughs> <coughs> Just like that, trying to get one breath, but you don't get to the privilege of getting a breath of air to breathe. So you're tormented with that. And the air smells so bad anyway, you don't want to breathe it. The, the smell of the demons is so putrid and foul, like the scripture says that Jesus cast out the foul spirits. Yeah. That foul says um, that foul means putrid, rotten, disgusting. It's way worse than anything you've ever smelled on earth. Uh, any open sewer or anything like that, just imagine, take that times a thousand and put it up to your nose and just breathe that. And it was mixed with the smell of brimstone and sulfur. Like a sulfur smell, horrible sulfur. And also burning flesh. I knew, I've never smelled burning flesh, but I knew that that's what it was, burning flesh. Horrible, gross smell. So you didn't want to breathe anyway but yet you couldn't get enough air. So you're denied all that. 